right and don't we? How do we teach them that they don't, they need to be not just rely on what they hear? But how many people do that? I mean, most everybody is guilty at one point or another of just relying on things they hear. I mean, some people have the, the luxury of having, knowing people that are just happen to be better resources, um, better information sources than others, but I mean, you watch the news, you rely on something that is told to you by somebody. Right. You, I mean, any of these media sources that are supposed to be educational or thought of by the scientific community, potentially as um, educational, scientifically educational, I mean, it's still hearsay. It's still one person telling somebody else something, and, and someone has to, you have to trust it down the line somewhere. Well, I, I know this is science online, but you are flipping things around. Because the kind of majority of people, I think, Deep space social networks are where they get most of their information, not from online. We're mm -hmm. a tiny component there. Television is still the biggest medium for yeah. information. All, all we can hope to do, I think, is to sort of trigger something where people will start to think and the information will get disseminated, we hope, somehow, into these other people that are intelligent. Yeah. yeah. Chris? Well, I mean, there is data on this, and uh, the latest. Science and Engineering Indicators 2010 from NSF just came out and I haven't looked at it yet. Um, but the last one, um, and we put this in our book, so I'll just read it to you. Um, um, according to the National Science Foundation, the web ranks second only to television among the leading sources of information about science for the average citizen, uh, in particular when Americans want to find information about a specific scientific topic. They go to the web far more often than they go to the library. Um, um, or their bookshelves. So and I don't. I have to go is into the report to find the percents. But basically, this has been studied, and it's definitely the case that for specific things like should I vaccinate, it's definitely Google, and it's definitely not encyclopedias. Yeah. Do you know whether in the source of information that they looked at peer groups? No, I have to go. But but the source is the National Science Foundation Science Engineering Indicators, Chapter Seven. Like it's it, it, it's definitely. The premise of this discussion, I think, is right. Yeah. So focusing on bloggers, what do we do to make them so reliable that this, what did you say, second to TV, some small percent, increases? And would bloggers be willing to have some accreditation? That's an interesting question. Last, which I have a very interesting answer to. I'm <laughs> waiting for an opening for this. Um, last year, there was, I think, a web, a web award full of bloggings, I think it is. And they, there was a, a science blogs were being, you know, ranked, you know, one of the best top ten science blogs. And I looked at it, and I immediately noticed that PZ's blog was not on top, so I thought something was wrong. And it turned out that the top three or four blogs were global climate, you know, change denialist blogs, and someone had hacked the system and made it up. Right. So forward in time, a few months back, I got contacted by the French company Wikio which is a blog listing company. So you put your badge, their badge on your blog, and then they list you and your ranking as to how many people are reading your blog. It's a, it's a, top, rank, a top list ranking system. And um, I said, I, I, I just sort of wrote a snarky email back to them saying, you know, these things don't work because what happened at the, you know, like there's, not, there's no credibility to the system. So they contacted me and said, okay, which blogs, you know, do we not list? Uh, let's start a system. So now there's this thing going on where there will be some bloggers selected as Wikio experts who will vet what blog they list in a certain category. Which is, itself is an interesting question. Like, how do you pick someone to be the person that decides that is not a real climate science blog, it's a fake climate science blog, and then throw it out? Well, obviously, the blogging you pick the top three, <laughs> right? So right. Talking. Yeah, that's the problem. So, and that, that's actually, you know, there's a, one solution is being implemented by this French company, Wikio, which you're going to try to get. And the experts will be identified as to who they are. So they'll be the target of, you know, uh, maybe well, a death threats. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody can set up a group to accreditation. So, once again, we come back to the problem of how do you help people distinguish? I mean, you know, we, we're talking about the problem, yet we are not. Well, so the, solution, the solution here is, in short, a UL listing analog. You know, if you buy, we don't ever really look because we know it's always there, but you buy a radio that says UL approved, that means when you plug it in, it will not blow up. Okay, the equivalent would be a solution. If you're, if you're not UL listed or whatever it is, BL listed, blog listing, 
you know, you're not really a science blogger, you're not really a blog about medicine. And there is, uh, did anyone know about this, the self, the, 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 the pledge thing, the medical blog? Was oh, yeah, the, um, Alexis Madrigal just uh, did the Pratico. Is that, is that what you're talking about? Blogs. Yeah, there, there, was, one, there, there was something there like two I, or three. Yeah, Alexis Maddox will just tweet one like in the last hour. <laughs> I think Cy is actually one of the bloggers that does that, right? Yeah. Do I do? <laughs> Timidly. No, the, the, where you, you, as a medical blogger, as a blogger as someone who does medical research blogging or something, you, you join a group and so that <laughs> promise to not say stuff that's bullshit. <laughs> um, it's how much part of the Oh, no, I actually don't have a whole group. I do. I have, uh, there, there's another solution to this problem, and um, aside from just saying, hey, trust me, I'm taking an oath, um, there are people who are trying to work on uh, web-wide uh, people ranking. So instead of like page rank by Google for pages, it'll be people ranking. And so, yeah, there, there are a few um, uh, basically like ID companies and like other, other, other groups like, like Dig and, and some other people who are companies who are trying to come together to find ways to basically be able to link people to all of their content across the web so that if you go comment on a blog, if you have your own blog, if you uh, do a podcast, if you have a, a journalistic story that's, um, that's promoted in Dig or something, then all of these sources um, will come together and you can, you can build a reputation. And then, uh, you'll have like a, a reputation score and there'll be like a central clearinghouse for everybody who posts stuff on the web and so over time, who's posting stuff and what they're posting and whether or not you're getting voted up or down, um, it can all, it's, it's just, it's still kind of this conceptual idea and it hasn't happened yet, but it's basically a, an, a way that you can build reputation and sites that are not reputable, global, you know, anti, anti-vax sites or anti-global or global warming denialism or whatever it happens to be, those people will eventually get, it, it'll, it'll shape itself out somehow. But, but again, what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is ranking, mm -hmm. using Tools to measure popularity that could be easily perverted. Uh, what we need is there are the, the idea is to not make them easily perverted. <laughs> the idea is to make it very difficult. But, <laughs> yeah, what we want, I think, is, is is something that ranks content that actually values mm -hmm. the scientific quality of content and gets a seal of approval from, from I hate to say it, but authorities in science, which mm -hmm. is ultimately what's going to boil down. Um, I just want to throw out something for consideration. Um, one way to think about what we're talking about is um, the idea of bringing increasing professionalization standards to science blogging. And if you look um, over the past uh, 100, 150 years of our science history, um, at every step throughout that, the um, input of increasing professionalization standards has also um, had the effect of excluding uh, those who are not white and male um, from whatever it is that's being professionalized and having its standards raised, um, whether intentionally or unintentionally, a lot of times intentionally, um, but many times unintentionally. Um, and this morning we had a session where we talked about um, how it is that we are going to uh, open up online um, science communities to uh, those who are not currently well represented um, in those communities. And what we can do to draw them in and build community um, and make it a more diverse um, scientific um, blogging presence online. So I just want to put it out there. Um, the, the notion that right now um, online science blogging is very white and very male and so the people who will be forming these standards of increasing professionalization are likely to be um, a very white and very male presence and I just want to put those two pieces together and let you think about that. Um, a couple of issues. First, um, let's assume for a moment that there's a uh, the actual practical way to create a ranking system that can't be gained. And, and so that it actually reflects uh, some, some real value, okay? Um, number one, keep your little, under, you know, the equivalent of the underwriter seal of approval. But then you take my 18-year-old freshman and 
how are you going, you know, 